And Alki David, founder of Film on Networks. His company has been streaming live television since 2008. He's also launching a service very similar to Ario called Ario Killer. He joins us right now from London. Uh, we've been talking uh, about you know, who can actually really disrupt this market? Who can be the new Steve Jobs uh, within the television market? Is that what you're aiming to do? No, not at all. Um, good evening. We are um, uh, all of a pedigree of film and television at uh, Film On. And uh, Aereo Killer was uh, the disruptive name to uh, enter a slew of lawsuits. Uh, we are, in fact, called FilmOn.com. Uh, we're not disruptors. Uh, the whole approach of the company has always wanted to be regulated like every cable company. And I think ultimately when it goes to the Supreme Court, which this issue will, uh, companies such as Filmon.com and Area will end up being regulated like a cable company. So ultimately, it's just increasing eyeballs, it's increasing distribution. Uh, the only difference that's uh, ultimately going to be disrupted, I believe, is the way that the Nielsen rating operates. And uh, it'll either be replaced or Nielsen will have to upgrade. Is that really the best thing, Paul Sweeney, for um, you know, a new company like this to, to be coming in and, and, and eventually have to face the same regulations as some of the other cable companies? Uh, uh, no, I think historically, you know, the cable television industry is one of the most heavily regulated businesses uh, you know, at the local level and at the national level. It's one of the challenges that they've had to face over time. I think what we're finding from a lot of the disruptive technologies, if you will, let's just take Netflix, for example, is you know, they are you know, kind of over-the-air internet free of some of the uh, FCC-mandated regulations, mm -hmm. and so that's allow them to develop their business model much more quickly, much more broadly, and not just the United States, but around the world. You know, Netflix is a great example because, yeah. Steve, that's a company that's actually creating its own content, um, and, and people love it. I mean, the, the, the demand for its content has been significant enough that people are saying, all right, you know, I'm willing to fork over this monthly fee, and then I get all this other stuff besides. Is Netflix, do you think, one of the real new models here? It is, and the fact is it's getting a lot of new competition, too. Everyone has suddenly realized that this is the free market at work. We saw with Apple, Samsung, and others what they've been doing there. So once people realize something is working, everyone uh, gets into it and pushes the envelope and expands it enormously. So, Mr. David, how are you guys different than, say, Netflix? Well, look, I mean, it's all, uh, you know, it boils down ultimately to uh, rights and rights clearance. You know, the uh, issue of... Uh, uh, rights management is something that is very uh, close to the cable industry's structure and the management of all of the different markets, particularly in the U.S. And uh, Netflix has spent an enormous amount of money uh, in order to acquire the rights that it has had initially to build its library of content that it offers to its consumer and now in order to uh, create or buy original content. You know, we're today, Filmon announced uh, its own original content with uh, The Legend of Bruce Lee, which is our own uh, play, which is offered free to the consumer. It's advertiser funded. So there are many different models that can be, uh, that can be uh, exploited in, this new, in these new emerging markets. However, uh, rights management, the respect of copyright still is within the scope of the law and uh, what happens. Well, question then, uh, uh, Alki. You are taking content that is effectively broadcast, repackaging it over the internet. So aren't you, in fact, violating copyrights by your own business model? No, not at all. We're not repackaging it. By repackaging, one would assume that we're altering or changing it. We're not changing it at all. Uh, we're, uh, but you are we're charging a the fee. Content within You're charging a fee, though, Alki, so you are getting compensated for content no, no, created no, by others. No, we're giving it, no, we're giving it away for free. Uh, Filmon is a free platform. We offer HD services and DVR services for an additional price, but that's purely for the service of the uh, storage space. The uh, actual service is completely free to the consumer. You know, the, uh, the networks are, bemoan, uh, are moaning about, uh, about this issue of not having free-to-air television. But free-to-air <laughs> free television is just that. It was mandated by Congress in order for these people to get their spectrum, to get their, uh, to, to get their ability to broadcast nationwide as superstations. They were mandated that they have to give this information for free to the consumer. And this is at the core well, of the argument of the 
digital antenna. You know, so how's Netflix able to get around all this stuff? Also? It, it's a completely well, different business. Hang, hang Netflix on one second, is a video-on-demand business. Okay. Netflix is a video-on-demand business. We're a live television platform uh -huh, with, uh -huh. uh, and, and, with and a small lies, element of video-on-demand. Okay, and therein, Paul Sweeney, lies, lies the difference? That's right. I mean, Netflix licenses for a fee the content that they redistribute over their system. So they pay CBS or uh, Viacom or Disney for their content. All right, we're going to have yeah, to and we it. also and we also pay Viacom and CBS and, and so on for additional content. We also license enormous amounts of content on our platform. The uh, the free-to-air television is a very very small portion of it, but the consumer expects on any any cable platform or virtual cable platform to have the major networks on that platform too. Otherwise, yeah. it isn't really uh, so. A, Mr. A professional David, are you effectively play. the new cable player? I mean, the cable players we, now become content providers, and, and you're, the, you're the mechanism by which the public can access it. That's correct. We are and have always wanted to pay retransmission fees. Uh, the networks refused to uh, allow us to pay retransmission, retransmission fees in 2010 when we first got in this fight. We want to be regulated as an MVPD or as a virtual cable platform. All right. We're going to leave it there. Thank you so much. Alki David, Aerial Killer founder and chairman of Film On.